from the beginning. Let's say this patient has a graft. Say I'm going over here to wash my hands. <laughs> right? And the gloves. Two gloves on. Always Smile to the camera. Before you do anything to a patient, you always verify that it's the right patient. You don't want to do the wrong thing for the wrong patient, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's say, hi, Mr. Doe. How are you today? Doing fine. Okay, well, I'm just going to take a look at your access. Take a look at the access. Just um, monitor for any signs or symptoms of infection, redness, bruising, anything, any complaints from the patient. Um, so let me tape this down. So. You always check the orders, too, to see what type of needle they use. Um, these are 17 gauge needles. If they have 16 gauge needles, 15 gauge needles, they have a graft. Uh, what else? Check the heparin order. Check to see if they use lidocaine. Sometimes you have patients that are allergic to, chlor uh, to iodine, so we do use um, alcohol. Or at my place, they use this um, antiseptic called chloroprep. Chloroprep. <laughs> So what I normally do before I prepare, I want to prepare everything before I cannulate the patient. Even when they get in, it's always important. You want to be organized and have everything ready. You have your, let's see. Pretend I have my alcohol. I don't think we have any more alcohol wipes. So you want to get the heparin. Let's say the patient gets a thousand heparin. Um, whenever you look at a heparin bottle, you always want to make sure that the medication's not expired. You don't want to give a patient expired medication. Um, if it's if it's the first time when you open it, you always want to put your initials and the date you open it. Because mm. after 28 days, it's not good. You throw it away. Mm. Um, Even if it's not expired yet? Even if it's not expired. So it's so good only for 28 days? 28 days. Yes. And if you're the first person to open it, you initiate and date it? Yes. Correct. So let's say this one's open already. Oh, mm -hmm. OK. This person signed their name. It's been less than 28 days. So, if it's been used already, you always want to pretend this is alcohol. I don't have any alcohol. What if the person forgot to sign and date it? You document it? You don't document it. I wouldn't take the chance. So, you just dis so you get you discard, discard it. I would discard it. Mm -hmm. just, cause, just because, like, let's say, for example, it's an old heparin and you give the patient an old heparin. What if it's um, seemingly new to you? Like, because you, you can tell how much liquid uh, is left in the bottle. What if it's, uh, you look at the content and it's like pretty brand new, mm -hmm. except that when you check for the signature and it's, it's not there. It's I missing, still wouldn't yeah. take you the chance. Wouldn't take I still it? wouldn't okay. take the chance. So, heparin, <laughs> for any medication, you always want to make sure that it's, okay. and you always do the five rights. What are the five rights? Patient's okay. name, patient's yeah. name, medication, dose, Route, route and time. Good. Good job. Good job, guys. Okay. So normally, if it's if the heparin's already been open, you always want to clean the top with the alcohol swab. Mm -hmm. okay, it's alcohol swab, right? This. Um, my technique for how I draw medication is I pull back. Mm -hmm. Let's say the patient's a thousand units, so I just pull back a thousand mm -hmm. or one. One. Mm -hmm. And then I put air. Mm -hmm. And then, and then aspirate. And then aspirate. Kind of lessens the chance of you getting bubbles. Mm -hmm. This is the wrong way to do it. Yeah. This is the way you're supposed to mm -hmm. cap the needle. So you have your bolus ready. And then now for the lidocaine. Check your lidocaine to see if it's expired, expiration date. Let's see where it is. Oh, there. March. They're, they're all expired. Yeah, they're all expired. March 2014. <laughs> okay, let's pretend it's like pretend. 2016 or something. And then you have your the initials and the date on and the lidocaine, light. right? Uh -huh. So if it's already been used, you always want to clean the top with the alcohol. I normally pull pull back point what point, point five. five. Take the needle out. Put it in. Push the air in. Water. Cap. This is not the right way to cap. Don't copy this. 
I normally just try to get as much air as I can. A little air. Clean the top again. Put the other needle. Pull back 0.5. Pull it back in. Push the air in. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Felix. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to focus on Felix. It's okay. I'm gonna focus on that range. <laughs> so, got all your supplies ready. Double check the order. Patients on 17 gauge needle. Get that ready. Is that a doctor's order too? What yes. gauge? Of mm -hmm. Everything uh, Everything's basically everything. doctor's order. Yeah. Doctor's order. So you just follow the doctor's order. Yeah, just follow whatever oh, that's it nice. Yeah. yeah. I know. I like uh -huh. okay. So you see the access. You're not sure whether or not which is arterial, which is mm -hmm. venous. Press the middle. Palpate. Did you say penis? <laughs> no. <laughs> did I? Wait, did I? Oh, no. <laughs> so you always want to press the middle. Feel for which has a stronger pulse. Yeah. Say this side is a stronger pulse. So, okay, I'm gonna do arterial here, venous here. We wanna clean the access. Let's pretend this is alcohol. And only circular motion facing outward. You wanna get all the bacteria. Patient washed his arm. Make sure you have the patient wash, washing arm too. The new one. Wash facing outward. Should I use this for opening this? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So messy. Is it if you need to circulate it only once? Because if you put it coming back and coming back, you're, you're intro introducing the infection. Technically, yeah, but because this is like a solution that cleans, uh -huh. I think it should be okay. Like should maybe be okay. like three or four times, just circular motion. Yeah. In order to up outdoor. So. Yeah. Perfect. <coughs> I'm left handed, so it looks kind of weird for me. Okay, so wait a couple wait minutes. Wait two to three minutes. Two to three dry. minutes mm -hmm. to dry. I normally change my gloves whenever I get. Because it's mm -hmm. harder to stick oh, yeah. sometimes. Mm -hmm. Wait, it's wet. Maybe like during this time you can get the blood pressure or you probably did get the blood pressure, set up your machine, get everything ready. So when they have the needles in, you could just get them right on, right? So let's pretend that this is dry, even though it's not. Mm -hmm. You want to get the first lidocaine needle, make sure there's no air in it. And you want to enter with the bevel up at a 15 degree angle. What I normally do is I push it in like this. Bevel up. And then push saline. Saline, you know what I mean? Light it came. Make sure you lock. You always lock your needles. You don't want to get stuck. Mm -hmm. Throw that away. Make sure there's no air in this one. Emulate, bevel up. Clean needle first. Always make sure this is closed. Bevel up. I don't even know where I stuck. So whenever you watch, you always want to hold the needle in place. Needle tip should always all the way be in. Sorry guys. Pressure. <laughs> Is moving. Oh, 
We use band-aids at my unit. We don't use the... Yeah, I think band-aids is better. Yeah. I think it's just kind of expensive. Mm. Mm, just... right here. Uh, are you guys following me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The video is here. Because it's the same I'm principle as the pistola. Yes, it is. It's just the angle you go in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to prime the penis line or arterial line first. Clamp. Penis line. You want to prime it. Clamp. Get your pepper pepper in. You want to aspirate it three times. Mm -hmm. I don't want to push fluid out. Do you want to just tap it just to get all the air? You don't want to have any air in the line, especially the venous line, mm -hmm. right? For 10 minutes. How far do you prime on the venous line? Like Normally all the way to the edge. Mm -hmm. Especially with the venous line, you always want to make sure there's no air. Arterial, mm -hmm. maybe like a little bit, it's okay because it goes to the machine. And I normally just do that. Okay. It's like the messiest tape job I ever made. I'm sorry, guys. Just do that. Yep. Is that good? Thank you. Is that good? Yeah. And then at this point, that's where you're calling the other technician to second check your machine. Make sure you go through and double check that all the orders are correct on the machine, your goal, time, everything. So. All right. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Remove. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. This is Lars. So in removing this doesn't matter which one first, right? Unlike um, the fistula. Venus. You start Venus. normally Venus. Yeah. Venus? Mm -hmm. Do you normally do Venus? Yeah. Even for a loop? Yeah. Yeah. Well it all depends. If they're depends. backwards. If they're arterials. I normally do like if the arterial's on the inward, I do arterial first if it's a loop graph. Only because if they're, if they were to hold it, it'd be kind of awkward to have them holding it here and then you're trying to remove a needle like right here. It's all a matter of technique, I guess you can say. What you feel comfortable with. So, let's see. Patient's off the machine, you returned all the blood. You did a sitting blood pressure, you did a standing blood pressure, everything's fine, patient feels fine. Get all your stuff ready before you remove the needles. You normally ask, oh, do you hold your own sites or do you use clamps? Depending on the facility. Some facilities don't use clamps. So you get all the tape off. Do our venous line first. How many patients do you have in the hospital? Do you have also four? Yeah, four. Three or four. The whole day. Yeah. For, for each. Hours. Yeah, it is actually. <laughs> oh wait, let me show you how I do it. Ten hours is the max. So me you yeah. for my shifts? Yeah, ten hours. You're twelve. Twelve. So, let's say for example, the safety is all the way back here. You always want to secure your needle and then you want to put yeah. the safety up here. You have this. Get your stuff ready. I normally do mine in threes. And then here, have your safety. Get this. It seems so easy for her, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I do it like all the time at work. So it's, you kind of, once you do it a lot, you get used to it. Mm. You know, it's kind of second nature to you. Like, mm. okay, just do it. You know what I mean? It's just a matter of yeah, doing it. Yeah. Other side. 
first time it's always hard. Yeah, the first time my hands are like shaky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they normally don't give you hard accesses when you start. They're not going to give you like a small access. They're going to start you off with like an easier, mm -hmm. like bigger. Yeah. Just so you can kind of like get a feel for like how the access is and sticking and getting comfortable with your technique because everybody's um, technique is different. Whatever you feel comfortable with, you know. And how long it takes to get comfortable? For me, like with the flow of the patient, you know, setting up the machines, getting them on, it took me like a good three months to get everything. My main thing too is you want to always be organized. Yeah. That's like the number one thing. You've got to be organized with a lot of the stuff. Have your stuff ready for next shift. Have your stuff ready when you take the patient off. Everything ready. Just so you're not like running back and forth to get everything. You always want to be organized. So. So, closing shift. I mean, there is patients that do dialysis at night. Yeah. So you get the machines ready again for the next shift. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, nice. so at our clinic we have fourth shift, so we always get ready. A lot of those patients are like working, they work during the day, they come to dialysis after, or they have a family member that can't bring them until later after they get off work. Um, yeah, just set up for fourth shift. Um, once the last shift is on, you normally prepare for the next, the next day. So you have all their lines, the saline, <coughs> dialyzer, flow sheet, baths, everything ready. So you mean like fourth shift from 7 to midnight? Or um, fourth like shift is normally like for our clinic is 6 to 10. Last patient gets off at 10.30. So it's all a matter of how long they run to. We have patients that run like two hours. The longest running patient in our clinic is six hours. Wow. wow. So it all it's all a matter. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. How many patients do you have a day? For like one, for as a tech or? As a tech, yeah. Um, I normally cover two shifts, so if it's four patients each shift, it's like eight patients for the whole day. Okay. So let's say like uh, you have <coughs> like a hepatitis patient, mm -hmm. like you, so he's in insulation role. Do you 